Okay, so in this chapter, chapter six, we talk. Uh, there's there's a lot to talk about. One talks about the electronic distance measuring units, so an EDM, and then we talk about how to make a distance measurement. Um, so as we get into it, the first thing I want to you know talk about is uh, the way an EDM works. It, it measures a slope distance. No matter where you're at, it measures a slope distance, which then requires you to make a reduction of the slope distance to a horizontal distance. Uh, like we've talked in the past, dealing with horizontal curves, vertical curves, we deal with distances that are in the horizontal plane. So any slope distance you make, it has to be converted and, and reduced back to a horizontal distance. The one thing I want to make sure and clear that, uh, that we do understand is, using an instrument now, we in the past when we talked about a... Um, setting up a level, an automatic level. We didn't care the position where it was. Also, when we said what the height of the instrument was, you, you remember I may mention that it wasn't necessarily the height of the instrument, it was the elevation of your sight line is what uh, was so important. In this instance, dealing with an EDM, we actually do have a height of instrument, which refers to a distance from where the ground is, whatever you're set up on, up to a certain point on the instrument. That's considered your HI. That is the height of the instrument. Now the rod that we use to make measurements with, it also has a height. So we can call that HR. Uh, so, so just a little bit of the nomenclature is, is just what I'm really wanting to get you to understand. Um, and then here, again, when you have a horizontal line, this angle here, alpha, that is your vertical angle. L, of course, is your slope distance, H is your horizontal distance, and D then would be your vertical distance. So back in the day, if you really wanted to do it a, a good way, you could have taken a tape measure, hold it out uh, at a certain distance, and you can see the, uh, the plumb line that the guy's holding right there to make sure that wherever he's at, he's plumb right over the point to give you a horizontal distance. Now, luckily, that is not the way we do things anymore. That's uh, just not as accurate, of course, you can see, and you can see why, say it was a real windy day, but it's just we, we have technology and other things that uh, help, us, help us to take care of those things. So in doing so, what we're going to look at is this. We have uh, um, one way to figure out a, a using some, uh, some of the information we have, if we know the elevation of a certain point and the height of the instrument, we can still figure out what the change in elevation is, what the uh, what D is over here is what we're looking for. Okay, so if we had a point here, point A, and we also had a point B right there, we have known elevations. Sorry. And if we have known elevations right there, then we also know heights of instrument and height of the rod. In this instance, they say HE, this is what I can consider to be HI. HR right here, H of the rod, you can just say it HR. Okay, in doing so, this is almost like a, a backside and a foresight, right? If I know the elevation up to a certain point from datum plus my height of the instrument, now if I take off and subtract then the elevation of point B plus the height of the rod right there, really what we're saying is it's cutting a line right through here which leaves this distance, which is D, right there. So in doing so, all that is is the elevation of A plus the elevation of the instrument, subtracting off then the sum of the elevation of B and the elevation of the rod. So let's give an example. Suppose you measure a slope distance of 165.360 meters from A to B. 165.360. All right, the elevation of A is 447.401, and the uh, elevation of B is 445.389. The height of the instrument A is 1.417, so this is 1.417, and then the height rod is 1.615. And all I'm asking you here now is what is the horizontal distance from A to B? So if we use that equation we just gave you, let's try and figure something out. First, we're looking for H. H is L squared minus D squared. That's just Pythagorean theorem. Now let's find out what D is. So D, we take the equation we had before, elevation of A plus the height of the instrument minus elevation of B plus the height of the rod. Take that, and now we understand that uh, this then becomes D. 
So now if we're still looking for h, right? We didn't we didn't solve for h yet. Now plugging everything back into this equation, we know our slope distance. Uh, subtract off the uh, the vertical difference, and then uh, go through the equation. Now you end up then with the horizontal distance of 165.350 meters. So that's one way to be able to do it if you have a known elevation at A and B and known instrument height and known rod height as you measure a uh, slope distance. But you're probably thinking, well, there's got to be a better way, something simpler to be able to do something like this. And well, I agree. Uh, if, you, if you don't know that, uh, don't know the elevation of A or B, there's another way to do it. Obviously, you can see here, it's probably glaring right at you. Why don't you just use right here? We either have a zenith angle or we have a vertical angle. All right, so say this time that we measure a distance of 201.324 meters from A to B, slope distance. You also measure the zenith angle of 122.1521, not point, but 122 degrees, 15 minutes, 21 seconds. So let's calculate now the horizontal distance from A to B. Simply put, H is, take the slope distance times the sine of Z, and Z in this instance is our zenith angle. So 201.324 times the sine of 122 degrees, 15 minutes, 21 seconds, is equal to 170.254. So it seems a little simpler, more intuitive as we go through that, but the previous example just helps you see that there's other ways to be able to calculate the, uh, reduce a slope distance to a horizontal distance. Now as we talk about uh, doing so, as we make slope distances, we have to understand now there's a lot more errors. In previous we talked about doing air propagation, I make a measurement plus or minus two millimeters. That's my, that's my standard deviation with making that measurement. Well, with an EDM, with an electronic distance measuring unit, there's more error that's involved in here. So inside here, we have constant errors. We've got a miscentering of the instrument, meaning we didn't put it over the point very good. We have a miscentering error of the rod, meaning as you put the rod in the right spot, and also are you holding it perfectly plumb. You also have just what's considered to be a constant error of an EDM, just saying every distance it measures, it's only going to be accurate to the nearest hundredth of a foot. Now what we also have are scalar errors. Scalar errors are parts per million. We've referenced this a little bit in lab um, as we talk about differences that errors can help to attribute uh, with uh, natural errors, with weather, with uh, temperature and pressure, those sorts of things. So what we have is now here's your total error budget. Okay, you have the error for your, uh, for your instrument, the error for the rod, error for the instrument itself, and then also have our parts per million. Now you can see that what I mean by scalar. Scalar is this, it's all dependent upon the distance. These right here, these are just individual errors. They're constant, they're always gonna be there. And one thing to keep in mind, and I'll make a, a point of it here just a sec again, but as you can see, if these are constant, in a short distance, those errors really show themselves. A large distance, on the other hand, those errors almost, uh, they're negligible. They disappear. This is the only one that affects then, because it's scalar, to whether it's a shorter or long distance. So the bigger, longer distance, this is where you're getting your error from, is from the scalar error, not necessarily from over here. So let's take a look at this. If I give you this example of a distance of 827.329 meters, okay, and I give you the errors, uh, two millimeters plus or minus two parts per million. So that's the instrument error, two millimeters, and then here's your scalar error of the instrument, two parts per million. Centering error, 1.5 millimeters, error of the rod, three millimeters. So what was my total um, error and the observed distance which I made? And then also I wanna know what's the precision of the slope measurement. So here's your equation. All it is is just plugging in the information. 1.5 squared from right here three from right there, two came from over here from your instrument. Now here's what you gotta be careful of are, are the units that you're dealing in. All these errors I gave you are in millimeters. So therefore we have to be using our distance in millimeters. And then you also have to convert parts per million, right? I told you it was two parts per million. It's two per one, one two, three, one, two, three. Two per one million. So that's an actual number. And this just isn't two. So you take that, and now when you divide that, you get uh, 2 times 10 to the minus 6, then times your distance in millimeters, so that way everything is in the right unit. Calculate all that, then we end up then with a total error then 
of 4.2 millimeters at a distance of 827.329 meters. So again, it's just something to know. This is now your true air budget. As you set up an instrument, you have air right here as you set up from your height and centering air. And then you also have somebody holding the rod over here. There's air right there. There's a natural air inside the instrument itself. And then you have your scalar air. So there's a lot of little airs now that contribute to a distance that's actually measured, as well as angles, which we'll talk about later. Last thing is your precision. Precision is just the error of the distance. So our error we, right here, 4.2 millimeters, over the overall distance of 827.329. Take that, and again, when we talked about precision in the past, I'm not looking for a decimal or anything. I'm looking for overall roundabout, what we're looking at. So take the 4.2 divided by the, the overall distance in millimeters. Make sure it's in the same units again. And what I'm looking for is a ratio, one per something one millimeter per 197,000 millimeters, or one meter per so many meters. In this instance here, it's one per 197,000. It's roundabout. You're going to get a very specific decimal, but like I said before, we're not so concerned about that to be able to compare our relative precisions.